Well, thank you, Dave. Thanks for putting on this great show for people and helping educate people. Thank you very much. So in 29 minutes, there's not a hell of a lot I can teach you. I would rather teach you one thing really well than a whole bunch of crap that's meaningless and general. I've been trading for 51 years. It's a long time. I'm still alive, still trading, still doing extremely well. So I want to talk to you today about stochastics, an old indicator that's been around for a long time. People use indicators a lot. The good news is there's a ton of indicators. The bad news is most of them are worthless, useless, don't predict anything, and people then use them the wrong way. Let's distinguish between an indicator, a method, a system, something that's rule-based, something that's analytical, and something that's interpretive. You can do any of these. I don't care for anything except this right here, things that are rule-based, by which I mean whether to buy or sell, when to get in, when to get out, the price to get in at, the price to get out at, profit maximizing strategy, risk, etc. Analytical, very romantic, interpretive, depends on how you feel. If you're feeling bullish, you're going to interpret things bullish. If you're feeling bearish, you're going to interpret things bearish. It's not going to work. So believe me, after trading for over half a century, it took me 15 years first to learn that I needed rules. If you don't have rules, it ain't going to work for you. If the rules are not consistent, it ain't going to work for you. So, stochastic. And I'm not going to go through all these slides word for word. You can read them when you get the PowerPoint or the PDF. I don't want to read to you. I want to show you stuff. And by the way, my address, jake at trade-futures.com. I'll be glad to answer your questions. So a stochastic process, definition, something involving chance or probability, or the more detailed answer developed by George Lane, a friend of mine who unfortunately passed away many years ago. George invented stochastic process, and a lot of people use it today just like they use other indicators. That's the good news. The bad news is they don't know how to use stochastic. I want to show you the ways that people use it, and I want to show you another way, because we have many choices as traders. Let me go through some of those choices, and forget about this stuff. You can read this later. So here's our choices. We can go for big moves. Big moves have lower odds of success. If you're willing to buy and hold and dollar cost average and do the Warren Buffett thing, if you're marginally correct about predicting the future, you will make big money, but by then you'll be an old man like me. If you're a young person, the big moves over long periods of time is great. You can try to take, trade big moves with high odds, but they don't occur very frequently. The relationship in markets is this. Smaller moves are easier to predict and have higher accuracy. Why is that? It's a lot easier to predict what's going to happen in the next couple of days as opposed to the next couple of months or the next couple of years or the next couple of decades. It's a lot easier to predict what's going to happen in the next two seconds or the next milliseconds or microseconds. That's what high frequency trading is all about. The ability to create or develop algorithms that look at price data or other variables and then predict what's going to happen over the next few ticks. And they compensate for the small moves by getting high odds of success. And with these high odds of success, they compensate for the size of the move by trading large positions. High frequency, large position trading made Goldman Sachs billions of dollars. The good news is it's doable. The bad news is you've got to have powerful computer equipment. You have to co-locate co your server close to the exchange so that the very small amount of time it takes for the data to travel to your computer is made smaller by being closer to the exchange. And those are all things that cost money. But as small traders or average traders, we can do other things. As traders who can't compete with Goldman Sachs, we can find our own high frequency trading methods by using patterns that are highly predictable. 
Of course, you can be a value investor if you want to. You can search stocks and find those that are good value. But again, that takes a long time. We live in an age of instantism, an age where everyone wants everything immediately. Instant food, instant results, instant, instant quotes, faster servers, faster internet lines, etc. So if you're oriented to fast, what I'm about to show you will give you the opportunity to trade fast or slow in any time frame you want. Let's talk about that briefly. Stochastic. I'm going to show you some old charts and I'm going to show you some new ones. Here's a chart, and by the way, this works in stocks and futures and forex, anything you want. Let's talk about stochastic. Stochastic consists of two indicators. The formulas are all over the internet. There are slightly different formulas for calculating it, but they will mostly be the same. You generate a number, and then you take a moving average of that number. So for example, we have the blue line, percent K, and then we have the moving average or percent K, which is a red line. It doesn't matter which line is which. That's not important right now. What's important is this. These lines, as you can see, mimic price or track price very closely. The process is designed to take the trend out of the price so that you can more accurately predict highs and lows. So let me show you what I'm talking about. These two red lines over here, which I will highlight, point to the red line and the green line, these two arrows, percent K and percent D. This line over here at 75% is the quote unquote overbought line. And this line down here at 25% is the oversold round line. As you probably know, stochastic varies in percent, approaching zero as a limit and approaching 100 as a limit. So stochastic can never go over 99.9999999, and it can never know, go below 0 0.0000001, etc. There's a theoretical limit to how high they can go, how low they can go, but there is no limit to how high prices can go, and there's no limit except zero to how low prices can go. So immediately, when you're dealing with stochastic, you're dealing with a problem, and the problem is price can continue to go higher while stochastic can't go higher. That's a problem. We'll deal with that problem momentarily. So where did this 75% come from? And where did this 25% come from? It comes from the user. You can define these any way you want, which is problem number one with stochastic. Is 80% overbought? Is 90% stochastic overbought? Is 10% oversold? Do you want to buy it oversold? Do you want to sell it overbought? How good does that work? Before I use anything, I like to test it. I've got a brilliant partner, Chris Moody, who's an expert trader and an expert coder, who does marvelous work with the indicators and programs them for TradeStation, Think or Swim, and Trade Navigator and others. So here's the issue. If I look at a chart like this and I say, let's line up the highs and the lows with price. We get something like this, and it starts to look really good. You say, wow, this is a beautiful thing. Look at this. Oversold, buy it. Overbought, sell it. Oversold, buy it. Overbought, oversold, overbought. And the highs and lows line up very beautifully. But these highs and lows are an illusion. They don't reflect what's really going on in terms of risk. They don't reflect the other necessary components, such as Profit maximizing, stop loss, exactly when to get in, exactly when to get out. How do you use it? Well, it's possible to grab any chart and say, well, I would have got in over here. Let me get my pointer. I would have got in over here, and I would have got out over here. Yes, with 2020 hindsight, you're, you're, you're a genius. But in reality, it doesn't work that way. When it gets oversold, over here, is it more oversold here or more oversold over here? How do you know when it's going to turn around? So some people have said, well, there's a solution to that. When it gets oversold below 25, well, wait a minute, I'm using 20. No, no, I'm using 15. No, I'm using 10. What do you use? There are no hard and fast rules that people have developed except what looks good. 
but I have some hard and fast rules for you today. So when it gets overbought over here, how overbought is overbought? What if it stays here for a long time and the price keeps going higher, but stochastic can't? That's a big problem. And anyone who's tried to use stochastic will have their head handed to them and has probably experienced exactly what I'm talking about. So is there another way? Well, let me give you an example. Here's another chart. I've put boxes around oversold areas on the bottom, overbought on the top. And look what happens. It gets oversold when it drops below 25 right over here. And it stays oversold while the stock keeps going down and people are saying, it's oversold, goddammit, it can't go any lower. Not true. Or where they say, it's overbought, I'm gonna go short, I'm gonna get out of my long position, and it stays overbought for days on end. And you say, what the hell is that about? Then some people say, I got a better way. When it gets oversold, right over here, don't do anything. Buy it when it comes back above over here. Oversold setup, buy trigger. Overbought setup, sell trigger. Oversold setup, oversold buy trigger, and so forth. That works a whole lot better. But you're still faced with the issue of 25 or 75, 20 or 80, 90 or 10. How do you know? You don't except through trial and error or through back testing. Let's look at something else. How about a situation like this? Stock becomes oversold right over here. Oops, sorry about that. Let me go back. Okay, hold on a moment, please. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Stock gets oversold at the vertical red line, stays oversold while the stock crashes. So if you bought it just because it's oversold, you made a big mistake and you don't know where to get out unless you have a stop. So when you're setting it up, I'm using 14 and three as the defaults. You can use 14 and five, it'll slow things down a little bit, but whatever you use, use it consistently the same way. So let's talk about overbought oversold again. In fact, let's talk about a different approach. Some people say the best way to use stochastic is when the lines cross. When the blue line crosses below the red line, like over here, go short. When the red line, cross, blue line crosses back above the red line, go long. What happens there? You get whipsawed. All of these little areas where they cross back and forth above each other are buys and sells. You end up giving back a lot of small losses and the big profits you take, you won't take unless you have a profit target and a trailing stop. So again, once you dig into stochastic, it's problematic and you say, hmm, it's not as beautiful as it looked before I got married, <laughs> okay? In other words, things change when you really get into doing it. It's like living with someone before you get married to them. You've got to experience it and see it firsthand before you fall in love with it and say, yes, this is working for me. So let's go to the next chart. So here's the problem, overbought. What is overbought? Overbought is a meaningless term. If it becomes overbought and it keeps on going up, it's more overbought. And it keeps on going up, it's extremely overbought. It can be grossly overbought, severely overbought, exceptionally overbought. It's a crowded trade, it's overextended, it's overdone, it's overbought or it's overboughtest. Meaningless stuff without numbers, so what? do they mean? We have to define some terms. So let's take a look at a few more approaches. Buy it when the lines cross after they've gone above overbought, below oversold. Let me show you what I mean. Approach number one, wait until it gets oversold, wait for the crossover, then buy it. Wait till it gets overbought, wait for the crossover, then sell it. Or the approach I just talked about before, wait till it gets oversold, buy it when it gets back above the 25% line. And as I said before, that works well. It's not perfect. You still get some false crossovers and some losses, but it works better than the standard approach, which is the one I showed you earlier. But is there something else we can do? 
And this is a close-up of that approach. But not so fast because when you're trying to use this in the 10 minute time frame, you're going to get crossovers all over the place. And the fact of the matter is most people trade in very short time frames, especially in currencies, Forex and S&P. Why? Because they think they can make money. And indeed they can if they have a methodology that's predictable and accurate, but most people don't. What I'd like to do is show you today another approach. One of the most important things I learned in trading over many years is to be a contrarian. I've made a lot of money by being different than most people. I've made a lot of money looking for bottoms when people are looking for declines, or when people are looking for tops. Let me, let me back up. I made a lot of money looking for tops when people are bullish. I made a lot of money looking for bottoms when people are bearish. The more bullish people are, the more I like it because I like the contrary point of view. By the time most people turn bullish, it's too late. I've proven that since 1987, we've conducted the daily sentiment index, small trader sentiment, every trading day since 1987. And that index of small trader sentiment is used by some of the biggest and best traders in the world to this very day who buy the data for me at the end of each day. Why? Because they know that when the small trader in aggregate, in high percentage, is very bullish. It's close to a top and vice versa, close to a bottom. But let's not talk about that. That's not what this webinar is all about. I want to show you a different approach. One of the ways in which we can improve stochastics or any methodology is to add a stop, a trailing stop, a profit maximizing strategy, and triggers. So example, we talked about this before. Here is the crossover use of stochastic. Showing what? When stochastics gets oversold below 25 and the stochastic KD cross, you're a buyer. Your target is the range of the bar when the crossover occurred. Taking this range and adding it to the buy trigger over here gives me a target right over here. The opposite situation stochastic goes above 75, the lines cross. You take the size of the bar of the cross and use it as your profit target achieved. By setup and trigger, the range of this bar would, would become the profit target for the long position. That's one way to use it, and that works well. And by the way, I don't have perfect for you today. I've got good, I've got great, but not perfect. So let's look at something else. Concept. That one I already showed you. Let's look at something else. Here we go. Let's talk about this. What if you're a contrarian and stochastic goes above overbought and instead of doing what most people do, which is sell, you buy. When stochastic becomes quote unquote oversold, instead of buying, you sell short. There's a concept for you. And my associate, Chris Moody, has programmed this and coded it, which is available at one of our websites called jakestradingstrategies.com. We'll talk about that later. So let's look at another one. Here's another one. And the numbers we're using here, to be specific, are 80% for quote unquote overbought, 20% for oversold. You can use 75 and 25 if you want to. You will get more trades, but you will sacrifice a certain amount of accuracy. The choice is yours. Fortunately, there are not too many choices. So how does this work? As soon as we cross above the 80% line, which is right over here, when most people are saying the market is overbought, we buy at the market. We hold that position until the configuration of the 2% K okay, and the percent K and percent D lines cross and we exit. Previous to that, we have a target, which is the range of the bar where we bought. Very simple. That range tends to repeat itself several times. It gives us further targets. But we're in here, we're out here. The opposite situation, short and out when they cross over here. Let's look at another one. 
short position, target reached. It reverses, no trade, short position again right over here, and the target was reached. Let's look at another one. Short position, crossover to exit if the target has not been reached first. Long position, and no result. In other words, when nowhere. So let me explain this a little bit more clearly if I haven't done so already. And again, remember my time is very limited here, so I need to focus on something very specific. If you want more specifics, I'll give you some details later. Remember, we use stochastic. We use, for this purpose, 80% overbought, 20% oversold. And I hate to use those terms because I don't believe in them, but there's nothing else to do in terms of in terms of our procedure. So we give, we'll just call it overbought, oversold. So the bottom line is this. When we go 80 or higher, we buy. The risk and reward is the range of the bar on which we got our trigger. The first target is the range of the first bar. That is achieved very quickly in most cases. If you're not stopped out, and if you don't get your target, before or the lines cross again, after they've gotten to overbought or oversold, you're out of the trade. It's a very quick trade, very easy to do. A couple of things. Try it before you use it. See if it works for you. Remember, the smaller the time frame, the smaller the profit. So again, let me show you a couple of charts. One thing, by the way, very important. <clears throat> Some people, usually engineers, get carried away with math. They say, my stochastic is 79.9935776. What should I do? Here's the thing. Turn off the decimals. In other words, whatever your program is, this is, trade, this is Genesis Trade Navigator. Don't get hung up on the decimals. Look for the whole number. Round to the nearest whole number. Keep it consistent. Don't get hung up with the decimal points. Let's do this. Here's another one right over here. Again, the setup and the trigger. Right over here, short, profit, target, and stop the range of this bar. Remain short. Crossover gets you out. Another one, and we're going to look at some more recent charts in a minute. Buy trigger, range of the first bar, the bar in which you got the trigger, target hit over here or out over here. Take your choice and try this your own way. Again, buy trigger, range of the bar of the trigger is your, is your target and has not crossed over yet. Let's look at some current charts. You like to trade S&P? You like to day trade? Here it is. It did not cross over here, it crossed over here. Buy, exit. Here's another one. Gold. Sell, in fact, I marked them in the green lines, vertical green lines. Sell, set up, and trigger right over here. Exit. Sell, buy set up and trigger, sell set up and trigger right over here, exit. Sell set up and trigger, exit. Sell set up and trigger, exit. So as I said before, these are small moves. They're actually bigger than they look because remember, this is the gold market and each tick is $10. Each 100 ticks is $100. So these are not small moves, but they're predictable. And remember what else? Very important. With a profit maximizing strategy, you can get more of the moves but I don't have time to tell you all that today, and it's not a carrot and a stick. I'm simply telling you, do your own research, develop the concept for yourself if you want to. Let's look at another one. This is gold, current chart, and not current, recent chart. Again, buy setup, and trigger, exit. Buy setup, exit. Sell setup, Exit. Buy setup. Exit. 
Very simple, very safe, easy to do. You always know your risk and reward before you get into a trade, and you know your target. So, summary, if it's used correctly, you can make money with it, do the crossovers, go through the PowerPoint presentation when you have an opportunity. Couple of things. I'm having two webinars. The links are located right over here. Very high odds short-term seasonals. Training system development. These are the websites you can find me at. But Chris Moody, my associate in jakestradingstrategies.com, and I'm going to have a free bonus session for you. To get the free bonus session, which we will discuss in more detail, stochastic pop, and look at some of the code and the indicators, which Chris has programmed brilliant, brilliantly. No charge for you. All you have to do is go to the website, click on the link for the free bonus session down here. One moment, please. For the free bonus session down here, sign up. And we'll give you the free webinar, and I think it'll be worth your while.